Right, and with the Chernobyl story. Right now, we are making our way into the basement of hospital number 126, where the first victims of the Chernobyl disaster have been brought to. And you can find lots of very, very contaminated clothing, amongst them firefighters' clothing, in the basement of that hospital. So we're checking that out right now. At first, these pitch black hallways provided nothing much of a reading. At least not as high as we expected. But as we move further into the hospital's basement, we will soon be picking up much higher radiation levels from these spots of where the gear has been dropped. Just listen to the clicks. Okay, getting 30 counts per second on the probe. You can see gear, or more like clothing, distributed all over the floor here. There's a boot from a firefighter there. And this room is entirely full of contaminated clothing. I was getting intense readings as you can hear. Lots and lots of counts. All the devices I had with me are in alarm mode. You can hear the beeps and clicks and everything. It's like a huge spot of uniform, high-level contamination. You can see I'm measuring the soles of the shoes here. And I'm getting readings in kilo counts per second, so thousands of counts per second. Now I'm gonna use the Gamma Scout. You can see it's like 600 microsievert per hour, but as I was just holding it above the floor a second ago, you can see it adjusts to 1.6 millisievert per hour, saying overflow. And using the automass without the probe, it actually shows an energy compensated gamma only reading. You can see it currently displays like 600, 700 microsievert per hour. So as I bring it more close to the floor, or to the close, you can see we're getting over 1 millisievert per hour as uniform contamination all over on that clothing. I was getting such readings from like a fuel fragment before, but those are just little point sources. Here, it's the entire floor. Everything you can see here, all these clothes that are contaminated and give you a reading of one millisievert per hour. Gamma only dose rate, that is. And you can see there's a lot of dust about as well, which, why, which is why I was wearing a dust protection mask. And I was just getting random readings, but they were all pretty much the same. And even my dosimeter watch was giving me a reading of like 70 microsievert per hour while standing up, so quite high above the floor. So yeah, intense levels of radiation here. So of course what I had to do is uh, I had to pick a sample of that clothing to analyze it in the gamma spectrometer. So let's take it and see what, what's inside there. You can see the sample. I was noting high beta activity, but the explanation for that is actually quite simple. Um, Cesium-137 is a beta and gamma emitter, and if you have something like a fuel fragment, uh, of course it's very dense, so very few of the beta radiation can actually escape that fuel fragment. But clothing is not very dense, you know, it's just clothes basically. So these beta particles, which uh, have a quite high mean energy as well, are able to move through these, uh, these pieces of clothing easily. So that's why we can detect a high beta activity as well as a high gamma activity as opposed to a fuel fragment, uh, which would be contaminated with the same material, with cesium-137. So yeah, the gamma spectrum. As you can see, nothing too unusual. Just a big old cesium-137 peak at 662 keV. It's only remarkable that the activity on this is very, very high. And well, people were actually wearing these clothes 25 years ago, back when there were so many other short-lived radioisotopes that you cannot even imagine how radioactive that clothing has been in the initial days and weeks after the Chernobyl incident. 